Hey. What's up? How y'all is? Good. At least one of y'all are. Wow. That's so loud. I mean, even I think I'm loud. That's a weird thing. That's a weird thing for me to say. Uh, so as we're going through November, we are... I got to move, man. I got to move now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, as we're going through November, we are doing thankfulness. We're doing gratitude. And um, in thinking about this, I'm thinking, you know, there's all kinds of stuff we can be grateful for, we should be grateful for. Um, but I really want to focus in on what does God's word say we should be thankful for? And uh, Tracy kind of, you know, nailed it last week when he said we should be thankful for suffering. And people go, yeah, not so much. But God says. And then Tracy laid out the case for that. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about community. The Word tells us we should be thankful for community. And uh, if we could get Genesis going here, it starts all the way back in the beginning. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. And, and we take that verse and we're like, that's where, where God gets to work on creating Eve so that um, Adam can have a partner and a helpmate. And I'm not going to devolve into that whole thing, but he said man should not be alone. And I think this stems from God's understanding that aloneness is not a good thing. Because see, up to this point, in all of recorded and unrecorded foreverness, God had never been alone. And if God himself chooses to live in a way that he's never alone, because remember, even in the beginning, he said, let's make man in our image. Even then, in some way that I am not even going to remotely try to explain, the Trinity was in fact, and God was a we. And so God came out of that and he goes, you know what, if we ourselves are not willing to live in a space where we are going to be alone, it's not good that man should be alone. And, and I think part of that need for community was imparted to us in the creation process. When, when God breathed his, his breath of life into us, and all those attributes of God, that nature of God came into us, I think the need for community was a part of that. And so God continues to tell us community is a good thing. And, and we're going to get into, if, if you're thinking right now community means your neighborhood, no. I mean, when I'm saying community, I mean togetherness, the togetherness of people. In, uh, in Hebrews chapter 10, the writer says, And let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Community is needed because we need other people in our lives to, to lift us up, to encourage us, to strengthen us, to let us know in the bad times, hey, you're not alone, to let us know in the good times, hey, I'm here to celebrate with you. We need to be connected to other people. And and it doesn't always even have to be real people. Uh, if you look at the state of the internet, which I would encourage you not to, uh, we are in a place where people are willing to form communities and connections to complete, utter, random strangers. But we are united in one thing, so we form a community with people we don't know. And quite honestly, I, I can't get on board with that because people are weird. And there's weird people out there on the internet. And quite honestly, I'm going to assume everybody on the internet's weird. And if they're not, when they get on the internet, the act of getting on the internet makes them weird. Um, so, but, but we, and, and if we can make friends with strangers, if we can make community with strangers, we can make community with people that don't exist. Now, you're sitting there, I think, because I can't see you, but I think you're sitting there going, 
what are you even talking about? Right now, two of continuing, two of the hottest shows that you can binge all the way through if you want to give up that much of your life on Netflix are Friends and The Office. Both shows centered in community. And Friends, I mean, man, was there anything better than Friends? They were young, they were cool, they were hip. They were finding incredible real estate deals in New York. And they were awesome, and we traveled if you, okay, who, who rode that friend train? Two people? Three, four. Oh my lord, Pete, what is wrong with our world? Okay, all right, let's try it. The Office? Who went, who, okay. And then we got on The Office because we went, I work there. I work with that guy. And, me, and there was a Dwight. You worked with a Dwight. That's why he was funny. And every, you thought you thought you were the Jim or the, or the Pam. Probably you weren't. You, you, you were probably like the Kevin and the Angela. I'm sorry. I, for, I, in this spot, I have to speak truth. But we watch these shows. And anybody, as, as you watch these, maybe as you binge through them now or you watch them in real time, did anybody get to the end of the show, like that last episode, and there was that, that little something in here like something just died a little bit? Okay, no? All right. Big guns. I'm pulling out the big guns. Anybody ever read a lengthy extended book series? Is this me? Do I need to go to a handheld? Yes. Cool. Not cool, because if I only have one hand, I talk half as fast. All right. A lengthy extended book series. A book series that maybe went, say, eight volumes. That you read cover to cover, back to back, in a row, and you rode that roller coaster, the highs, the lows, the emotional turmoil. If you're not with me, you're not with me. You're not going to get it. But if you're with me, you know what I'm talking about. And you got to the last page of that last book, and there was nothing. There was, and it was, like, it was like a friendship ended a little bit. For those not, I'm talking Harry Potter here, people. Seriously, I'm talking Harry Potter. You get to the last page of Harry Potter, and it's like, but, 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 and there's no more. And there is, but I'm not going there, because I wanted that more so much, I read the next one, and no, it didn't do it. And so we are capable of forming relationships with people that don't even exist. And if you look in our world, it's all built on community. If you have a job, you are part of a community. And it may be a community you go to every week and every day, and you go, I want my community to burn to the ground because I don't want to come here again. <laughs> if you are on a sports team of any kind, you're part of a community. If you support a sports team of any kind, you're part of a community. If you like anything on Facebook, you're part of a community, which I would, again, go back and reconsider some of those life choices because you're part of a community. If you go to a coffee shop and you just see people, we go to a coffee shop once a week, same time, same place, and there's always, there's like two different groups. There's a group of guys who I don't know what they do, but they work outside because they are in the hardcore car hearts when they come in. And they sit around for a half hour, 45 minutes, and shoot the breeze, and then they leave. And if you watch them, they're not talking about anything important. They're not talking about anything world-shattering, but you can see community. And then a while later, the uh, more experienced in life citizens group shows up. And takes up, and I don't know how long they stay there. They might be there all day. I, for all I know, there's like a bus that drops them off and says, I'll be back at four. 
And so they just spend all day at the coffee shop. But when you see their interactions, you can see community taking place. Community is so important in the makeup of being human that we can't get away from it. And so when you're part of community, you need to be thankful for that. And you may think of, as, as I'm talking, there may be a particular community, a particular group you're part of, and, and you see the, um, the warts, and you, and you see the parts you don't like, and sometimes you go, ah, I don't even know why I hang out with these people. Be gentle. They're saying the same thing about you. But be thankful because there's so many others out there who don't have a community. There's so many others out there who look at what you have that you take for granted and they just go, God, I wish I had that. And the coolest thing is, of all the communities, there is the community of the church. And see, in, in many ways, people tend to treat the church as if it's just one more community. It's just one more group. It's just one more thing they're part of and they go to. But if in your mind, the church is the same as a, as a book group or as a coffee group or as, uh, you know, the, the getting together somewhere to watch the, you choose the NFL team of your choice that you watch together with another group of people, you vastly underestimate what the church is. Because the church is a community that is indwelled with the power and the spirit of God. Wherever else you go, whatever else you do, whatever groups you're part of, they are not the living dwelling place of God in this world. You may take God's influence into them, but they are not the church. The church is God's collection of the saints. In Ephesians. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. All right, just right there. You are fellow citizens with the saints. You are members of an eternal family. Eternal. Yes. Look around the room. You're going to be with these people forever. And, and I just throw this out. If you get fed up of my nonsense and you decide you want a new church, or if you like my nonsense because you left some other church, you're going to be with those people forever. We are an eternal collection of God's saints and people living an eternal life together. We are built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone in whom the whole structure being joined together grows into a holy temple in the Lord. You are a holy temple. You may be part of a Chicago Bears booster group. And that's cool. That's awesome. Go do that. I only say that because Kim was the first face I saw. Here, you are the holy temple of the living God. And if you are not thankful for that, you misunderstand what the church is. It is not a destination you come to and leave once a week. It is something you are a part of. You are a building block in God's holy dwelling place. And when you come here, you are in the presence of the saints. You are one of those saints. You ever think about church like that? Or is it, can we just stay home? Can we just not go? 
Why would you not want to come to be part of God's holy temple? Because if being part of the holy temple is not something that excites you, maybe you need to reevaluate some things in your life. And maybe you either misunderstand what the church is, or you are not the saint you think you are. I'm really, and in, in, you know, I'm not going to throw this out like it was coincidence. I mean, we planned it this way. Talking about being thankful for the church today. Today, this particular day. Because as of this last Friday, two days ago, Christ Community Church is 15 years old. Friday was our 15th anniversary, folks. And you may go, well, okay, cool. That's something I want you to think about. I really tried to drill down into the numbers, but I am not like a numbers research statistics wonk. I'm sure I know some, but I'm not going to put... Actually, if I had asked them to find this, they probably could have and would have loved doing it, but then I would have had to explain what they found, and that would have given me a headache. So, every year, over one million people in this country start a business. 40% of those will close by the end of the first year. So, out of 100, 40 don't make it through the full first year. Within five years, more than 80% of them will fail. Of the 20% that make it past the first five years, 80% won't make it past the second five. That works out, if my math is right, and I am not going to say it is, that works out to 4% of new business startups, and I picked this because it applies to churches as well, 4%, 4% will last 10 years. So of all the churches that started, that got off the ground in 2003, we were part of 4% that lasted that long. People, and, 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 and I want you to appreciate just how important that is because these people, you don't go out and start a church as a random thing. This is not just something, yeah, oh, let's start a church. Cool, when do you want to do that? Starting a church takes funding and research and understanding, and the people that called to do this sort of thing are not just random yokels. These are smart, driven, ambitious people. And for some reason, we're the ones that lasted. There is no reason, there is no human reason, logical, that you can point to at Christ Community Church to figure out why we were part of the 4% when so many others just as worthy didn't. And the only thing I can tell you is Christ Community Church is still here today, 15 years later, because God wants it so. That right there tells you this is not a human effort. This is not just a community. This is God's very presence doing this work. And, uh, folks, it has not been easy. And the fact that it has not been easy has been the proof that God has been with us. Because there have been so many times along the way when, quite honestly, okay, maybe there are like three where somebody actually said it. But I don't know how many times where there just the thought, dude, dude, just let's do something else. And there was never a move to do something else because there was never that voice from God saying, go do something else. There was the voice from God going, I'm in this. I've got this. I'm doing this. And you can choose to help me or not. I'm going to tell you right now, and, and maybe, maybe you never even noticed, but right outside these doors, hanging right there on the wall as you come out, was our charter document, where on the very first day of Christ Community Church, 
we had a signing ceremony, and everybody that was part of that newly formed church signed their name to say, I am a charter member. There's a lot more names on that poster of folks who are not here anymore than those who are. And so the fact that folks are still here and folks are still fighting on and folks are still part of this effort and folks still appreciate the community of Christ Community Church and that God is still doing a work here. And not only is God still doing a work, God is still doing some of the best, most loving, most ambitious work I can think of him having done in the last 15 years. And he chooses to do it in this community and he chooses to do it with you. God says, I'm doing something awesome, and I can totally do it by myself because I'm God, but I want you to come help me. If you are here, you are not here by random chance. If you are here, and this is not your first Sunday, you were brought here. Something directed you to come here, and once you got here, something said, go back. And then the next week, go back. And if you have continued to be here, there is something in you telling you, this is something to be part of. This is God calling you to Christ Community Church. God does not call people to come somewhere and be a spectator. If you are here, it is God calling you here to say, I want you to help me. And that's not, that's not put you on the hook. That's not, you're not doing enough. That's not, you need to have a job. That's, God wants you to help. You might not remember this, but like, for me, like a hundred years ago, I can remember. Okay, either I can remember, or I tell myself I can remember. I don't know. I can remember being a small child. And having a parent doing something completely on their own, something they'd done a hundred times, something they were perfectly capable of doing without any help, but they asked, do you want to come help? And it was the best thing ever. I get to go help? I, I, I can really help? I, I can help make the cookies? I can, I can help change the tire? I can remember being the father and, and having, having the little boy and saying, do you want to come help daddy? And that, that look, really? I, I can help. I can come do what you're doing. And it wasn't the work that got done. Because folks, we all know, when you ask a child to help you do something, it's going to take three times as long and four times the mess. But that's not why you do it. God doesn't need your help. God wants your help. God says, hey, do you want to come help Daddy? That is the beauty of our community. And so this year, this season, as you're thinking about, you know, you're going to come down to that moment in a couple weeks where you're sitting around the turkey, sitting around the table before or after the meal, and somebody does the obligatory Thanksgiving thing, let's go around the table and everybody say one thing you're thankful for. <laughs> oh, and there's nothing worse. You know, you, maybe like if you have siblings, or maybe when like you were little, or even like at 40, you're sitting around looking at the table and you're going, don't, don't take my, don't say my thing, because you don't want to be the one going, uh, the same as what he said. So just right now, give some thought. What are you thankful for? And, and, and whether it be on Thanksgiving Day or every day as part of your prayers or just a random moment when you're sitting in the car, when you're sitting and you're thinking about what you are truly thankful for, be thankful for the communities that you're part of, all the communities that you're part of. Maybe there's some communities you're part of where you need their love and encouragement and support. Maybe there's other communities you're part of where you get to be the love and support that somebody else needs. Because that's what community is about. Community is a place where you can know and be known, you can love and be loved, and you can serve and be served. And in the midst of all those other communities, be thankful for your church. Because this is a community that has lasted for 15 years because God's hand is on it and God calls you to come and be part of it. 
And God wants you to continue to be part of it and help him do what daddy's doing. Would you close your eyes with me as we finish in prayer? Lord, I thank you for Christ Community Church. And, and more importantly, I thank you for your presence here and the work you've done um, in the last 15 years. It's been wild. It's been crazy. It's been frustrating. It's been scary. Um, but above all, it's been a work of love and a work of faith. And it's, it's been a joy because you have been there and it has been your path and we have simply followed and i pray father for each one here that's uh whether it be for a short time or a long time each one here who is who is taking part in that journey who is following you as you lead us on to whatever comes next and we have some we have some ideas we have some visions we have some goals but ultimately we just need to follow after you and that is my prayer this morning for Christ Community Church, that each of us as an individual would look to you and follow after you. And then as we come together in community, that our visions of you, our understanding of you would come together. They would meld together into a greater, truer vision of who you are and what you're doing. And that Christ Community Church can be a, a, a source of power and a source of good and a source of love not just for the city in which we live but for each and every one of us who are part of it here today now may the lord bless you and keep you may he make his face to shine upon you and may you go this day and every day and live in the community of god's saints for it's in jesus name we pray